Madam Chairman, I'm Stanley Cox from the 52nd uh, District. Um, and um, I, I think the uh, best way to present, uh, we, I, could, I could talk on it probably a few hours, but I don't think that really makes a lot of sense, uh, is maybe to talk about uh, the differences between um, House Bill 216 and House Bill 48 that we heard at the last. Uh, it's essentially identical in regard to the uh, most of the provisions. Uh, the uh, the differences are uh, in, on the first page uh, under uh, 115.427, paragraph one, subparagraph three. Uh, it it uh, it uh, it includes uh, as part of the approved identification um, a photograph uh, identification containing a photograph of an individual uh, by the uh, Missouri National Guard, United States Armed Forces, the Department of Vet Veterans Affairs, uh, uh, that do not include expiration dates. And the, uh, this, the origins of this was uh, previous work, I think two years ago, um, we wanted to expand it to uh, clearly provide uh, that military ID was sufficient uh, and found out that military IDs do not generally include a or do not, maybe have never include, it's been a long time since I had a military ID, I don't remember, but uh, the, uh, the expiration, they do not include an expiration. So uh, that's why that was included. Um, and secondly, uh, the inclusion of a, a, a slight change to uh, section 115.430, uh, which is uh, uh, really is clarifying language in regard to the provisional ballot uh, as you remember from the previous testimony, um, if you uh, do not meet the requirements of it, there is provision in, uh, in uh, House Bill uh, 48 as well uh, that provides for a provisional ballot, allows you to cast a provisional ballot. This is just some clarifying language uh, that specifies that a provisional ballot is available uh, under this change if, if adopted. Uh, in, in all cases uh, uh, when you vote at the polls. Uh, this gives the, uh, expands the provisional ballot protection that's included in the other to, uh, to all elections. Uh, and that, again, was on the, uh, I, I'm certain that was on the uh, Senate bill that was passed two years ago and certainly the House Committee substitute that we voted out of election committee, uh, I believe, two years ago. Uh, those are the changes, uh, you know, principally uh, there was a, back in 2010, I haven't, I think there have been some since then, but I don't really have record of it, there was a, a poll, national poll of, uh, of people's attitude about um, the requirement that you prove who you are by photo identification polls, uh, uh, that Rasmussen poll showed 82% of, of Americans believe that that's a uh, basic, a reasonable requirement. Um, uh, we, we certainly had a voter fraud in Missouri. You know, I mentioned uh, last week that uh, in 2008 there was a gentleman who was convicted. Uh, he uh, chose to vote for president in two different states, Missouri and Illinois. Uh, we know about the ACORN uh, convictions in the Kansas City area. Uh, the Supreme Court of the United States, in their decision upholding the Indiana photo ID legislation, uh, specifically held that... Uh, that uh, the, uh, there are flagrant examples of voter fraud, they are real and they can affect a uh, close election. Essentially what photo identification is, is to protect the ballot. Um, um, as mentioned last week, protect the sanctity of, of our vote, which is certainly a, one of the highest principles that, that, uh, that uh, at least I feel that uh, exists in a representative government. Uh, there was a mention uh, uh, last week there was a study by a professor at the University of Missouri. I should be able to remember his name, but he, he went to the Indiana example because they had adopted a photo ID. And, and the, I, the argument of disenfranchisement as a result of photo ID, I, I think, and I'll get you the link to that uh, study, uh, was, was bumped, it was, abs was not true. And, uh, and uh, that position was certainly not documented in, the, in, uh, in that state, which had, a, had not had a photo ID and had adopted a photo ID. And that, of course, issue went to the Supreme Court. Uh, but when uh, 
when he studied it, he determined that, uh, that there was no, in fact, disenfranchisement, as, which is the argument. Uh, the, um, uh, as, as mentioned last week, uh, this statute, just as for House Bill 48, uh, it, it alleviates uh, those concerns, uh, should alleviate those concerns, uh, provides for a free non-driver's license for those who uh, do not have one, it exempts the elderly. I, 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 uh, rep I go along with Representative Duggar. I think some slight modification of that year might be fine. It's my, my bill says 41 as well. Uh, it uh, provides if, uh, uh, and the reason for the elderly, uh, uh, people born before 1941, there are pe examples of people that, that did have trouble in Missouri and other states uh, having, uh, uh, getting birth certificates. It was a reality back in the first half of last century. Um, and uh, uh, finally, the provision about provisional ballots uh, is essentially an exemption uh, which that if you vote a provisional ballot and then you establish who you are, you don't have to present a photo ID. But it gives the election authority uh, careful consideration in, in doing their job, assuring that, the, uh, that your vote is not taken away by those who are not Authorized. Unfortunately, there are people in this world who seek to uh, illegally and wrongfully deprive us of our vote, and this is a reasonable uh, provision which will protect the sanctity of our vote. And certainly, I'd entertain any questions. Thank you, Mr. Cox. Uh, are there any questions in the committee, Mr. Dunn? To inquire, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Representative Cox. Uh, the first question I have, and I asked the same question. Uh, last week, what issue are we attempting to address uh, through this? I know you alluded to uh, voter fraud, but has there been voter ID fraud? I think those are two very distinct things, voter fraud and voter ID fraud. There have been documented cases. Uh, can you give examples of that here? I can. There, there are few and they are old, and I'll tell you why. Uh, and I can give you them, but they're, they're, they're 20 years old. And the reason for that, the reason that they are, uh, they're few documented is because it's just like check fraud. You don't do that in the public. And unfortunately, people get away with it. But my position is it's clearly an issue because if you're not going to cheat on election day, why do you do all of this other fraud of registration fraud, which is extremely uh, commonly proved and exists? It is one of the aspects of fraud that exists. And, uh, and so when we know that people are, are doing that, there must be a reason. People do things for a logical reason. They do it to cast an illegal vote, which means they have to go, if they vote on election day, they have to go and they have to prove who they are. And this is the firewall to protect the system by, on election day, making people prove who they are. There are, I mean, I could, if you really want me, I'd give you some examples. There was a, in I'm New York, in like New York State, state. I can't, in New York State back in the, here in from the, no. here in Missouri. Oh, you don't want to hear about here others. Okay. Uh, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't uh, about Missouri. well, uh, the gentleman who voted for president in both states undoubtedly showed something like a, uh, like a, uh, a utility bill. And so, uh, and, and uh, established who he is. Would this prevent that from happening? Uh, not necessarily. But, but I would tell you that uh, why, in, why would the people, those people convicted in uh, Kansas City, the acorn workers, why would they be soliciting votes unless they intended to vote? And it is difficult to come up with a specific example of as they call, like somehow, photo voter uh, voter day election uh, identification is a separate type of fraud. I dispute that. It is all the same fraud. It's a fraud against the voters of this state, and that is very, very common in the state. It, it's happened historically. If you've read and followed the news over the last 20 years, is very common, and and by creating the firewall of preventing voter fraud by requiring you to identify yourself, we will protect our voters and your vote on election day. It is not a separate fraud, it is, it is voter fraud. 
I, I will have to agree to disagree on that. Second question. You I don't have, agree? It's 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 all voter second fraud. Second question I have um, is in regards to the provisional ballots. Uh, in the language that you have here, you didn't, do not allow for a person who is voting absentee to utilize a provisional ballot if they not, can, do not have the proper documentation at that time. Why you don't have to show a photo ID to vote absentee. Why, why are you not allowing photo for identification ballot? in my bill? But it doesn't apply because photo identification is not required for an absentee. Absentee is absent from the election. I understand that. So you can't you can't have a provisional ballot when you're not at the polls. But a person can go into the Board of Elections and vote absentee as well. So why are you not allowing for that? I think one of the issues... Well, I think I'm allowing the for that the if, that if the absentee the is an absentee cast the at the election. Peak. I think... One if, of the issues that I have with I that think, is... The let me answer the, the question. Do you not I want... I can finish my statement. Well, no, you one asked me issue. a question. One of the issues that I have... You don't want to hear my answer. I do, but I'd like to finish my statement. Thank you. No, no. One of the issues but you had a question. Let me answer the question before you ask another question. elderly person. So would this bill, in effect, disenfranchise those elderly persons who are going and utilizing absentee ballots? It doesn't disenfranchise anyone who's lawful. It disenfranchises cheaters. It, dis it, it, gives, it gives protection to those people who are lawful voters. It does not, I believe, and, and I could be wrong about this, but I believe uh, that a, a person who votes at the election authority absentee, the absentee that doesn't include uh, a photo ID or those who are absent from the polls in any way. In other words, my mother used to vote at home because she was homebound. You can't have a provisional ballot relating to her. No further questions. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Cox. Sorry. Any other questions of the bill handler? Mr. Cop or Ms. Conway? To, to inquire, Madam Chairman. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. This is reminiscent of three years ago. You were on the other side, so I think we'll... Uh, I want to start out with uh, a provision of the bill that is a change that was not mentioned, and I believe that has to do with the wording that changes the uh, from the Secretary of State to the Election Authority to provide advance notice of the requirements of the photo identification. Uh, you mean that's on a, that's not in House Bill 48? It's in uh, 216, isn't it? Well, no, what I'm saying is, uh, I mean, I think that's, a, I believe it's in House Bill 48. I could be wrong, but go ahead. I think in 48, it's the, elect, it's the Secretary of State. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, uh, okay. Well, that was not an intended... Uh, and actually, Representative Duggar and I did not coordinate our bills, but obviously they need to be coordinated because we don't need to both give notices. Uh, I, I, think, Represent, I think 48 has a, has a good approach. So you would be willing to allow the Secretary of State to be the uh, notifier. department, to be the notifier, because if they're going to go and contact television markets or radio stations or buy vast newspaper advertisements to state the fact that the individual would need a photo ID in order to get receive a ballot and not a provisional ballot, I think they would probably have the expertise to do that for the individual. I, I think that's fine. Uh, I, w I want to get back to the point and that's been argued on a number of occasions of the rationale be, be for us not accepting expired identification. Can, can you help me with that? I mean, we're requiring what we, I mean, the object is to have a photo of the person to determine if the person who is who they claim they are. I think there is a difference between expired uh, identification and that which is not expired, other than the obvious. Uh, for example, I know that uh, I take all of my old expired photo identification, which I, in my case are driver's licenses typically, and I throw them in my drawer. I suppose uh, if somebody broke into my house, that could be if expired photo identification, could be a treasure trove by anybody who looked a little bit like me. And, uh, you know, uh, I, think, I think requiring a, a current photo identification, that which people tend to hang on to and, 
and protect because it's important in our ordinary life. But there is a distinction. Well, with your unique qualities, I would find that to be very odd to happen. Uh, I don't know exactly how to take that, but I'll take it in the most Well, you know, I, I, and I'm, I'm mulling this in my own head because I, I actually do the same thing. I've got my freshman college ID that I saw. And I sometimes use, and normally it's accepted. Uh, <laughs> but, but I think what I'm looking at is that there's a number of elderly people who do not renew their license that would have an expired driver's license. If they showed up at the polls, and that was their photograph, recently taken six or eight years ago, that the intention of the legislation is for that person to prove that they are that person. And you know, I think I'll, that would be adequate. Obviously, a photo ID of any nature is better than none. I would agree with that. Uh, I, I would, I would say that as long, you know, if you don't have a photo, current photo identification, the state provides you one. Um, that should be good enough. Uh, next, a, a couple of things that, and I'm not sure whether they vary a lot with 48. But one of the things was a, a, uh, a photo or f photograph issued by the state of Missouri. Would you consider that to include photo identification issued by a state university? Uh, is, that, uh, is that in 216? I mean, well, it's, it's I know, 216, 48. I mean, uh, it's in one of them, I know, that says that there's yeah, identification issued by the state of Missouri. I, I know that issue was discussed, and, and uh, I personally do, do not want to uh, delegate the authority of photo identifications down to the junior high. You know, I mean, no, I'm saying not, not that your junior highs are voting, but uh, but what I'm telling you, there's lots of people who put out. And but some, but some they are which, they would be a state institution. And that, I believe, was the terminology. If it's not in this legislation, that was in 48. Yeah, I don't think it's in 216. But, but Eric, I, I, we specifically talked about that and analyzed it carefully. And, and I don't personally agree that we should delegate that authority down to the lowest local government, or in this case, a Well, but in, in essence, the Department of Revenue isn't ran technically by state employees. I mean, the employees who are taking photographs at the universities uh, are actually state paid employees who are doing the screening and determining if who the person is. I mean, but, but the we, system is at least controlled by, by in this case, one state agency as opposed to multitude. I mean, there are a lot of, uh, you know, for example, there's, a, uh, I'm sure the community college in my district, uh, although I, I never had one, uh, issues IDs. I, it's certainly a state institution. I don't know if you would include them. Uh, the uh, 30 miles away, there's a four-year institution that, you know, there are just dozens of those, and I'm not sure that it's good to, uh, to simply delegate that authority to... Uh, uh, well, the, there's more than dozens of private contractors who are taking over the Department of Reformer responsibilities of the Department of Revenues, and, and I mean, obviously, we... Well, I don't know. See, I don't know. Maybe you're right. I don't know... Uh, I don't know uh, in the city, in my community, the person who takes my picture, took my picture last month, was a state employee. But I don't know, maybe is it well, different some places? Yeah, certainly. In See, a, my perspective is pretty narrow. I don't in, in, in my locale, yeah, uh, and I won't agree with you on that, but in my locale, uh, obviously, I mean, when the federal government came in and said that they had authorized more than 2,000 fraudulent photo IDs, uh, I mean, I think that certainly would not happen if we were asking the registrar at the University of Missouri to be responsible for these photographs and these. Well, that was that was uh, that was a, a controversy that dealt with the uh, license fee office, and usually most of those people, the one actually that takes the photographs, is state employee. At least it is in mine. I don't and believe it. It's in ours. I think it's completely contracted yeah. out. But Maybe so. Maybe. Yeah. Okay, those are just some of the questions. I think that we could look at this legislation and see if maybe a few of those would be able to uh, Thank you. make it a little better. Thank you, Madam Chair. Any other questions of the witness, Ms. Newman? To inquire, Madam Chair. Good morning, Representative. Good morning. We have a few questions for you. 
Um, first of all, have you read the 2006 um, Missouri State Supreme Court decision on voter identification? I certainly have. And are you aware of the justices' decision? Do you know by what number that they came to that conclusion that they did? It was a majority, at least. Okay. No, I, I don't. I, I uh, did not bring my copy of Weinshack along, but I could tell you what their uh, analysis, their flawed analysis was. As their to, flawed analysis? Absolutely flawed. Okay. Uh, they said that if you, uh, in order, to, you know, they established something I agree with, that voting is a fundamental right. Uh, they established that, or is that in our, states, our, our state constitution? Well, it's both the federal and the state position. I agree with that, but their further analysis was flawed. They said that uh, any burden that you might place upon voting, any any uh, thing that would maybe cost burden in the sense of financial burden, those kinds of burdens, is is uh, unconstitutional. Well, the problem with that is that uh, we require burdens upon people to cast their vote all the time. For example, you have to go to a poll, like polling place. Well, that's a burden because you have to either own a car or or pay mass transportation. Is that a financial burden in terms of oh, the financial costs? Certainly, I, I pay several thousand dollars a year to own my car and includes gives me the right, a, a small part of it goes to going to the polls. It's a financial burden, it's a flawed analysis. Everything, there's economic cost to doing anything. I mean, it costs me to get here to to, to work today. It, it costs me to, uh, to do everything in my life and so to suggest that Anything that that might potentially have a burden, especially weighed with the with the the fundamental right we all have to be protected from fraud. So it was a totally flawed analysis, and and uh, but but we're dealing with that. You know that's what you have to do. All right. Uh, other questions here. Um, in that just Supreme Court. By the way, saying, Mrs. Weinshack has been here uh, a few years ago and testified, and and never said she could not get a photo ID. She just chose not to get a photo ID. Which is kind of an interesting. So it goes all the way to Supreme Court. They say they strike down photo ID for somebody who simply doesn't want to get a photo ID, who can afford a photo ID, who doesn't want one. Well, well I think we'd have to ask her those questions. That's what she said before. several times. Um, going back to the Supreme Court decision, did they find any voter impersonation fraud in Missouri? Was there any evidence that was produced in that case? Uh, in the, I wasn't at the trial. I don't know. But in the decision, did they talk about any voter impersonation fraud that had? I, I'm sure. I'm sure rate? they. I'm sure they chose not to find any in their opinion. They chose not to find any. <laughs> right. Um, but was there? Maybe the guys who tried the case were, were bad lawyers, produced? and they were going up against these. All right. So it's bad lawyers and bad judges. Bad lawyers and, and bad, bad lawyers. And I don't know. I don't know the facts of the case in the sense that. Okay. But is there I, any know evidence that, of voter fraud produced in that case, that was in that decision? Any prosecuted evidence? The there was problem. nobody referred to a prosecution in the case, but see, they were trying to justify their flawed decision, so they didn't put that so in. So we're going back to the flawed decision and the flawed attorneys who represent. No, I'm saying it could be flawed attorneys. I don't know okay. how it happened. But the justices were flawed in their decision. Flawed in their analysis, absolutely. Right. So there was no evidence of voter impersonation fraud in Missouri that was produced I in don't, that case. I don't know that. I wasn't at the trial. Of that. But you read the decision. Okay, and they didn't allow Lou to any. Well, I don't recall any analysis, any ref. ref Are you a former prosecutor yourself? Yeah. And how many cases of voter impersonation fraud have you prosecuted? Oh, about the county? same number of seatbelt violations. Uh, that, voter you know, impersonation fraud. I have a list. I have a. I have a list. There is no crime of vote per, per impersonation fraud, by the way, as you probably know. But secondly, I've got a list back in the office. I'll share it with you of the offenses in Missouri that have never been prosecuted. I'm doing the criminal code. There's about right, well, 25 percent of the offenses that exist on our statutes never been filed. There is no such offense of that, so I've never prosecuted. Okay, so you've never prosecuted one. It doesn't and exist. And how many cases have any county prosecutor in Missouri? It, it's not a it's not a separate crime. There are voter fraud crimes, but there's no voter impersonation crime, so it's never been prosecuted. It doesn't exist. All right, so there's there's never so it, you, you're saying the crime doesn't exist. Has there been any cases? There are. There is a it is a crime to do that as you know, but it's not called voter impersonation fraud. It's, it's an election offense. Uh, we, can, we can ask somebody else here who's got the statutes. There's a whole book on it as to the offenses. It's in, I think, 115, but um, uh, there is no separate offense for that. So there you'll never find anybody offense. who's ever prosecuted right, well, because it doesn't exist. Well, let's try some different terminology. Has there been any 
fraud persecuted, voter fraud prosecuted, of someone trying to vote who's not themselves in Missouri? I, I don't know. I don't know. So we don't know that there are... So, so the fact but that, you know, so, is that so, what you're fact, so you think all crime is reported, is that your position? It's a, it's a, especially I'm, that I'm talking about involved. voter impersonation fraud, I'm talking yeah, about the purpose I'm of your bill. I'm talking about all fraud crimes, you think they're all identified? I'm talking process? about the purpose of your bill, because you no, say no, what you're over. saying, you're saying that Representative first of all, it's not a crime, week. and it's never been prosecuted because it doesn't exist, and secondly, if, if there's never by, been anybody prosecuted, I don't know that they have or not, for any kind of fraud relating to identification on election day, uh, that that it doesn't exist. That's that's just not true. Okay. So why in the world? Why in no the world would you? Why in the world would you illegal? Why would you seek to register people illegally? Right, we're not talking about vote. voter registration. No. In this why bill. would you do that? Well, I don't know why you would do that, that's Representative. But think. this has bill has nothing, absolutely nothing, to stop. Any type of it's of a firewall registration from it's a firewall errors. from fraud. It, it stops them on election. Nothing to do with no, voter registration. Really, exactly. I can go all day and write down Mickey Mouse at registering to vote. Mickey Mouse will not show up to vote. Dead dogs will not show up to oh, vote. Oh. This bill has nothing to do. You you uh, voter registration. You would register Mickey Mouse if you were a cheater because you'd register somebody. Mickey Mouse would uh, never be put on the voter roll, so it doesn't matter. This that's right, has that's right. nothing would put to do with voter registration. You would put somebody's name on there, and, and somebody would and go in that and other person show up? on election day, and voter identification uh, provision to protect the voters would stop that as a firewall. I see, you see as it? a firewall. Okay, uh, but you wrote just this week in an email that you sent out to your constituents and whoever. Uh, that our state has a long my, history I'm of. I'm my capital report. Well, the, your your email is public. I'm sorry, Representative. Oh, no, I'm I'm uh, Your you wrote just this week. Um, you quoted, uh, "Our state has a long history of voter fraud, especially in the urban centers." You remember, we've already, Mitzi, you remember Mitzi? Uh, Representative, you remember I'm asking Mitzi you a question here. You remember Mitzi the uh, Representative, you stated, "Especially in the urban centers." Now, you just stated that there has been nothing prosecuted, nothing in your county, no evidence come I, forth, I someone voting that's not themselves, but yet you're stating just this week in your email mm -hmm. to your constituents that there's a long history of voter fraud, particularly in urban centers. I, I, now, can you tell me what's an urban center? I really fire them up every time I use that urban center. <laughs> what? You know, some people might not use that urban center, but I what use is it an urban center? Every, What is an urban well, center in your definition? We, we have at least two or three urban centers. One's called St. Louis, one's called Kansas City. It's the Okay, so you're talking about there's population. a long history. Why didn't you Well, certainly, that? look at look at St. Louis. I mean, they, they're, they're in... Voter the, impersonation fraud in St. Louis. Voter Give me fraud. a case. There is no such thing as voter impersonation fraud. So there's fraud. no such thing as it, and yet this bill is to address voter impersonation it's fraud. You just said, fraud Representative, there isn't any. Address There's no voting. such thing as voter impersonation fraud. Yet this bill is addressing that. You say there's no such thing. No, so I find this, that very, this, very interesting. This will stop fraud in this voting. This will stop no type of registration fraud. There is nothing in this bill. There's nothing that even talks about What are you talking about, about registration fraud? I'm talking about fraud on election day. So you're day. talking about just hypothetical fraud that could be there. It is this there. bill has it is does there. nothing it is to address there. hypothetical it fraud. It is there. It is there. It, I it's see. Absolute. We can't see it. We don't know that it exists. We can't see it. Some people don't see know what's the, obvious. Oh, we can't see it. All right. But but there is this fraud in urban centers, and this is what I find troubling. Because it doesn't happen in other places, correct? Oh, Only no. It urban happens centers? everywhere. It happens, you know, they used to give liquor in Pettis County for a vote. You know, we used to. It used to be a, a pretty equal opportunity, but most of the reported fraud in Missouri over the last 25, 30 years has been Kansas City or St. Louis. Okay, but it, voter people voting who are not themselves. Voter fraud. Okay. Oh, just vote hypothetical voter fraud. You don't okay. think that exists? Right. But you also said in 2010, and this was reported, that there are countless examples of voter fraud. Yet you just admitted here three minutes ago. That there's no such thing. Countless that it example exist. of voter fraud. Doesn't exist. It happens all the time. I, I don't know of any. Does this why. bill address those counts? It certainly examples? does. It gives protection by requiring people who by show up in the poll people to show who, who they are. What about the people who they who can't are? Do that? What about the people that can't do that? There, this is the exemptions that are provided to protect these people. To protect it's them from what? From something that doesn't exist. 
something that's hypothetical. Voter We're telling people exist. that you can no longer vote you because are, you, you can't get your photo ID because, because you are something that your doesn't eyes exist. To what exists. I am blind to what exists. You are blind to what exists. I see. And the people who are not able to vote under this bill. Now we No legitimate voter is going to be denied a vote under this bill. They're just not going to be denied. Will they be denied a regular ballot Ms. under this Newman, bill? Ms. Newman, Mr. Cox, we do have another bill today, and we still have not heard the favor or against or informational purposes on this bill. So let's uh, let's try to wrap this up, okay? Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, so we've already established here that it doesn't exist, and but there's countless examples. Okay. I disagree with that, but you can say that if you want to. I mean, Representative, the I, chair has asked us to move on. As an attorney, are you aware of the various state federal court decisions regarding voter ID around the country? No. Yeah. You're aware of all of those? Well, maybe not every one of them, but I certainly read the Supreme Court decision upholding Indiana. Okay, which was based on a, on a different constitution, correct? Was not based on the Missouri Constitution? So therefore, that case really has... No, it was based on the U.S. Constitution. That I see. Was and what? does our state constitution have a stronger um, fundamental right provision? That's, why, we're, that's why I'm also seeking to change the Constitution. Oh, okay. To clarify so we, that we can protect ourselves. Okay, so we have to protect ourselves. All right. Um, I also want to ask you about this. Um, you know, there's been various Republican leaders, governors, uh, national consultants, um, elected officials who have admitted in the last six months over and over... Do you, think the governor, ID, do you count the governor of Florida, the former governor, as a as a as a, a national Republican, consultant? As a Republican, he's a Democrat now. He changed parties. Oh, that's what this was happening said. when he was a Republican governor. Oh, okay. They have all admitted that their we'll, voter we'll ID count, we'll efforts. We'll count him as a Republican. Right. Representative, I'm asking you a question, please. Well, I'm just pointing out you okay. want to identify people that you claim are. Okay. Representative, this is my inquiry. Go ahead. I appreciate your respect. Go ahead. They have all publicly stated that these efforts in various states across the country are designed to restrict voters from voting Democrat. They I have just, all admitted I, this. I dispute that. You, you dispute that. that. Republicans so you, you disagree that. with all of those statements? That's correct. Okay. Um, are you a member of ALEC? Uh, I renewed yesterday. Fabulous. Wonderful so organization. Is this, this bill, we have obviously, we've already seen um, copies of this in various states, so you're you're proud that you're a member of ALEC. Wonderful organization. Fabulous. Well, Free enterprise. Well, back to my very last question, I know the chairman would like, or chairman would like to wrap this up. Based on what you told us so far this morning, that there is this invisible fraud that I myself cannot see Those it. your words. I don't accept You them. told me that I was blind to the fraud that's uh, out that's there. That's true. Is denying one citizen, regardless of the numbers of people who would be affected, as an attorney, as someone who upheld, upholds hopefully the your oath to protect the Missouri State Constitution along with the U.S. Constitution. You remember we took that oath twice to make sure that we are clear about it. Is denying one vote under this justified? If it's, it's one vote, it's, not it's one denied. current voter that not can no longer vote. any lawful current voter. If one vote, one legal vote it's, cannot be cast because of this bill, is this bill justified? It's a question that it's like beating your wife. This doesn't deny anybody a vote. So the answer is it doesn't do it. You know, it's like, do you beat your wife? I mean, that that's You're not the question here. <coughs> the question is, does it deny anybody? And it doesn't. No, I don't want to deny if one, people if vote. One Quite frankly, even though you think I want to deny people the right to vote, that's not right. That's my I want is, to protect each and every one of our votes. Representative, there is one person in the state of Missouri who has it ha, is legally qualified to vote and could no longer vote because of this bill. Is this bill justified? It, it won't happen. Representative, thank you very much. Other questions of the handler of the bill, Mr. Gozer. To inquire, please. Is it a uh, a right? or privilege according to the Constitution for uh, me to purchase or own a gun in Missouri? I pretty, you know, I'm, I actually hope so. <laughs> I'm not. It's a right? I'm sure it's a right, yes. And it it certainly is under U.S. Require, a, require an ID, a photo ID, to do either of those at times? Um, 
I think so. I've purchased guns before. I believe I have to show an ID. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions of the handler of the bill, Mr. Cox? Or Mr. Conway? A follow up inquiry, Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Representative, I guess this would be considered cross, so I'm the second chair coming in, but a uh, couple of things. Uh, 115.631 does make it a class one election offense punishable up by five years right, to, right. to offer any affidavit certification or anything Certainly. that wouldn't. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there are abilities for the prosecutor should they... Well, it's a crime. It's clearly a crime. It's just not a separate crime as right. defined by... The <laughs> most, most, of the, most of the election offenses in the 600 chapter or 631 that goes on for four or five pages are all written kind of vaguely to give the prosecutor a little bit of leniency. Mm -hmm. I wanted to inquire one other thing that I forgot originally. Uh, if we would expand the provisional voting to all elections, would not that fall under the Secretary of State since they are the individuals who pay the, the cost? So would your interpretation of this be that the Secretary of State would continue to pay the cost of provisional voting even if we did extend it to local elections? I don't know that answer clearly. It sounds like you know the answer. Well, I, yeah, under, provisional well, I, mean, ballots I under, just want to... If provisional ballots under current law are paid by the Secretary of State, I don't so, know that this so. changes anything. And lastly, there's a provision in, in 48 that doesn't appear in 216, and you reference this in your discussion with uh, Representative Newman, that uh, if, a per, if a provisional ballot is determined to be eligible and that the election authority is able to determine that that person should have received a ballot, even if they had not provided the photo identification that the provisional ballot could be determined to be counted by the election official, whereas in 48 we have a that the individual has to return to the election official's office within three days. I'm sorry, I didn't miss that. I didn't notice that difference, but that does make sense because the bill we voted out, and this is uh, 216 is identical to what we voted out of election, except for the advanced voting provisions, which are not included in it. So that does make sense that that is a difference. But 216 doesn't refer to the individual coming back. I think that's what it says, and uh, and uh, the uh, uh, but it allows the election authority to verify given time within the parameters of of uh, provisional balloting to but but the, but the voter would not have to return, correct? They have a right to return, but they don't have to. I think that's right. <laughs> And it could still be counted. That's right. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Any other questions? Mr. Butler. Good morning, Representative Cox. Morning. How are you doing? Um, I just have uh, some questions about the execution of this bill. And um, the, part of the execution is the cost incurred by the election authority to implement the photo identification uh, must be reimbursed by the state. Is there any potential for fraud? Is there possible fraud for the reimbursement of that to back to the election authority? With the honesty and integrity of our election authorities, there's no possible chance that there would be fraud. The requirement for... Uh, of, of course there could be fraud in any kind of transfer of money. Okay. People can do that. Okay. The requirement of uh, underlying documents for uh, citizens. Is there uh, any fraud that possibly can happen at the government level from receiving those documents? In everything, there's potential fraud, right. and, and uh, this is this bill's addressing fraud in voting, but there is fraud otherwise, sure. Is there any parts of this bill that will address the fraud that can happen from the execution of the bill that, that, may, that may occur are, if, if, if government agencies don't do their job in a sense? There are statutes that, that make it a crime to file false affidavits and to use and to file uh, false uh, affidavits with the government and so forth. I mean, those are existing penal statutes. Okay. So it doesn't change that any, but they're still in. And are, are there already any statutes and policies that uh, allow election authorities and uh, government agencies to weed out fraud? from registration and, and that you talked about already in your in your statement. Uh, those are crimes. 
first of all, uh, and the election authority has the ability to deal with that in the civil statute as well. In, in some regards, I mean, I'm not an expert in, but I know that they, if they, if they recognize a, uh, a fraudulent um, a registration, they can remove under a certain procedure, remove that from the polls, from the books. If you, if they. So, so my understanding is that your bill only um, goes towards and talks about fraud of citizens. You're not uh, making any laws to strengthen uh, the reduction of fraud at the government level. It's just you're only pointing at citizens are the are the only ones that's possible for fraud, correct? Uh, certainly, people can, in doing their duty as an election authority or anyone else, uh, they can co uh, commit fraud, uh, and this doesn't really relate to that. Yeah, so, so government officials, we don't need to worry about their fraud, let's just worry about the citizens. Well, I worry about fraud. fraud. I, worry. Those fraudulent I stay, stay awake every night worrying about fraud. Gotcha. Thank you. Any other questions from the committee to the handbook? All right. Now, folks, we, we still have one bill to hear, and so those that are going to speak in favor of, against, or for informational purposes on Mr. Cox's bill, let's be cognizant of the time here.